I stopped working on the transmit chain and I started, uh, I went back to the receiver chain and I started doing some work and I found I was getting quite a bit of noise through the circuit so I replaced the crystals with some better match crystals I changed the transformer uh, because uh, according to some calculations I did the impedance of this crystal filter is 600 ohms so I created um, some transformers to match the 1500 ohms to the 600 ohms of the uh, uh, crystal filter and as well I changed the uh, preamp I was getting quite a bit of noise and I suspect it was because I had a really dirty uh, layout of the preamp so I etched a, a proper board and my preamp is based on a 3904 um, uh, amplifier so I thought what I would do is I would try and calibrate my local oscillator uh, to make sure that it's um, it's actually matches what the local oscillator is in my um, ICOM radio. So in this test I've got the speaker connected to the uh, uh, audio amplifier and I've got the antenna connected just a little hokey wire antenna here and I've got my my ICOM receiver here tuned to 7 uh, 100 exactly and uh, I've got the antenna from that uh, from my ICOM radio going to a dummy load and I've got this little wire antenna here so I'll get a little bit of coupling of, uh, of energy between the two my ICOM radio is set to, to 5 watts, it's set at the lowest RF power setting which is about 5 watts and I've cranked down my mic gain so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a uh, 1500 hertz tone on this phone feed it into the microphone and that 1500 hertz tone should come out here now what I could do is I could zero beat the tone coming out of my speaker to the tone that my phone is coming out as I change the uh, setting for my local oscillator then I could uh, tune it to get both frequencies um, uh, exactly matching. So my phone is putting out a 1500 hertz tone I'm going to key the mic here and you could hear tone coming out of the speaker It's getting a little bit of feedback but uh, there is there is no beat there what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frequency of my local oscillator so you could hear the beat so there I've changed the frequency and there you could hear a beat so that's about probably just over one beat a second so we're off by about maybe one or two Hertz so I'm going to put it back to zero beat so I change it by one Hertz and you can hear the beat still so I change it by another Hertz and there's no beat, just a little bit of feedback. And if you take a look at the setting, it's saying it's uh, 709970, and my ICOM is saying 7100, so my local oscillator is off by 30 hertz, which is uh, not too bad. So I now have my XG3 connected at 40 meters uh, and it's uh, connected to a frequency counter a homemade frequency counter and this frequency counter has been calibrated with a, a GPS uh, oscillator GC, G, GPS uh, based oscillator and uh, it's uh, showing that um, my XG3 is uh, it's off by 3 Hertz it's supposed to be 7. 1 megahertz and uh, it's showing that it's uh, 3 low, three hertz low so my XG3 is pretty close to 7.1 megahertz uh, it's only off by uh, 
3 Hz. My XG3 is now connected to my ICOM radio and my ICOM radio is set to CW and at 7100 it's uh, hearing that tone. So now if I was to tune, set the mode here to lower sideband 7100 uh, 7.1 megahertz. I shouldn't hear it and the offset uh, that I am tuned to off of 7.1 megahertz will be the frequency of the tone I'll be hearing. So right there that's a 700 hertz tone that I'm hearing. One kilohertz, 1.5, and so forth. So let's go take a look at my Dueling 612s and let's see how that uh, performs with this test. The XG3 is now connected to my uh, Dueling 612s and uh, right now it's set to 7.1 megahertz and I'm going to go ahead and change this so there's 700 Hertz tone and let me just turn up the volume a bit I've also got my scope connected to the speaker and my scope's doing an FFT and if we look here here's the peak it's seeing and it's showing that's approximately 708 Hertz and we know the XG3 is off by about 3 Hertz so you know we're off by about uh, plus or minus 5 Hertz so that's uh, pretty good I've just changed the XG3 to be putting out minus 107 dBm and I'm not hearing anything coming out of the speaker so I'm just going to crank up the RF gain here. I can barely hear, I can hear something but it's not very loud. There now you can clearly hear that's a 107 minus 107 uh, DBM signal coming into the receiver and again on my scope it's showing the peak there at uh, 708 uh, Hertz. As part of my audio amplifier I made a little detector circuit here before um, the audio is fed to the LM386. Uh, I've got a little S meter detector here and I've got that connected to my uh, volt ohm meter and I've got my XG3 connected to the the antenna so I'm gonna go ahead so that's a minus 33 dBm signal coming in so that's extremely strong and my S meter showing 1.3 volts that's a minus 73 DBM it's showing uh, 0.78 and that's a minus 107 you can't hear the tone because the volume I cranked down if I was to crank the volume up you can hear the tone and that's showing 0.7 volts so the idea here is that that um, connection there will go to the Arduino the Arduino is going to digitize that voltage and convert that voltage into a S unit. I've added the relay here uh, to do the transmit uh, receive uh, power switching so I'm not going to do a demonstration where I'm going to switch between receive and transmit. I have got my transmit side connected to a dummy load. I've got my scope connected to the output of the bandpass filter and uh, I have got my antenna connected to my XG3. 
So if I was to turn on my XG3, so it's in receive mode, and I'm hearing my XG3 coming out, and I've got a little switch here to put it into transmit mode, and you can see the receive and transmit LED are switching on and off. So what I have to do to enable transmit, let me turn off my XG3. Uh, first thing I have to do is I have to swap the LO and BFO. And I've got a little handy feature here. If I press and hold the rotary encoder when the cursor is in clock mode, clock select mode, it'll swap uh, LO and BFO. So there, it just swapped LO, BFO. So now I'm going to turn on my uh, phone here. I'm going to have it generate a 1500 hertz tone. And I'm going to push the transmit button. So there it's transmitting. And we come up my scope and we see a nice prominent peak there. And that's uh, Y2, Y1, sorry. And it's uh, 36.8 dBm. And the second line, the second cursor line there, is uh, minus 40, it's minus 50 dB down. And if you look at all the uh, stuff around it, it's uh, well below 42 dB down, so that's going to meet uh, FCC requirements. I now have my scope uh, set for the center frequency here to be 14.2 megahertz, and I'm just going to transmit to check that uh, 14 megahertz harmonic and there you could see the 14 megahertz harmonic it's actually above that 42 dB line so that uh, 14 megahertz harmonic it's not 42 dB down from the fundamental however that's okay because because what I did here was I didn't have a second 40 meter low pass filter and I use a 30 meter low pass filter so that 30 meter low pass filter is probably not knocking down that uh, 14 megahertz harmonic uh, enough so I'm sure if I was to put the um, a 40 meter low pass filter here I would be okay so I need to go and build myself a second uh, 40 meter uh, low pass filter and check it out also the next step will be to populate this area of the board and put the relay in there that's going to switch between transmit and receive. I've added the antenna switch relay and also the power meter detector circuit here which is going to detect the power level and uh, now my antenna is connected here and this is now connected to the receiver so that's the uh, the relay is going to switch be between uh, receive it's going to connect the antenna to the receive uh, or it's going to connect the antenna to the output of the uh, uh, low pass filter there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this out so right now it's in receive mode and I've got the XG3 connected to the antenna. I'm going to turn it on. And we're getting a tone coming out of the speaker. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to have to stop the video because I have to connect the antenna to the dummy load. The antenna is connected to the dummy load now. And my scope probe is connected to the antenna. So I'll be able to see on an FFT the power coming out of uh, the, the antenna. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go swap the LO and BFO frequencies. So now it's in transmit mode and uh, I need to go turn on the tone. I'm going to have to pause the video. Uh, I have to feed a tone from the phone into the microphone here. So I've just turned on the tone on the phone. And uh, I've got a push to talk button connected to the push to talk circuit here. I'm going to go ahead and push that, and you'll see the LED lights change. So the uh, transmit LED light comes on, 
I come up to my scope and I'm not quite seeing 37 dBm. So now if I go and I look at the power meter, the voltage on the power meter circuits, it's showing about 3.0 uh, 3 volts, 3.1 volts. And if I was to use the preamp circuit here, adjust that, um, that uh, power meter reading will go up and as well the power output of the PA is going to go up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that up and we'll check the voltage uh, reading. So I've just uh, changed the gain of that amplifier to get the full 5 watts out. So when I key the mic now, you'll see I'm getting a full 5 watts coming out. And if I look at the meter reading here, it's showing 3.6 volts. Before we're showing 3 volts. So it's gone up uh, 0.6 volts. So uh, you can clearly see it's registering a voltage proportional to the power output.